Welcome to another of our craft lessons from the Dancing Goats. Today we're in my shop and I've got a fire in the wood stove. It's nice and warm in here even though it's cold outside. And we're going to learn about the traditional folkways practice of making a besom. A besom is the old name for a broom and the original brooms weren't flat. They weren't sewn with wire and they certainly were not made with broom carn either heather or willow twigs or some other sort of uh, small twigged trees or brush was used to make the original brooms, besoms. Uh, in, 17, in the 1790s, a gentleman on the East Coast came up with the idea of using sorghum for making brooms and a new industry was born. The, uh, the Shakers uh, took the uh, took elements of the Industrial Revolution and applied it to broom making, used wire and pressed the brooms flat and sewed them. But that's not what we're going to do today. Today we're going to make an old style broom like they would have originally been made with just a stick, some tying twine, and a little bit of broom corn. Making the traditional hearth besom is a relatively simple process and it involves just a few tools and very simple tools. Those tools are a pair of shears and I've seen a lot of different people use a lot of different kinds of shears and uh, electrician shears are good, um, kitchen shears are, are good, pruning shears are good. Uh, but I like the stainless steel kitchen shears the best. Um, making brooms is a wet process and the electrician shears are made out of high carbon steel. Most pruning shears are made out of high carbon steel and they will not hold up. They will rust and not be very useful uh, very quickly and that is from experience. So the, the, there's a couple of key technologies that we're going to talk about. Uh, uh, for something that holds up and cuts the cuts the corn and cuts the uh, the twine that we're going to use uh, I just really like the simple little kitchen shears that you can get in any store uh, They're made out of stainless steel and they don't rust. So that's one tool uh, Another tool that I really like for making brooms that helps a lot is a, a stained glass nylon fid uh, You can get this at any stained glass store get them online from any one of a dozen different suppliers and the, uh, the nylon uh, fid has a uh, tapered end and for tucking the weaving that we're going to do with the Appalachian style broom, uh, everybody finds this helpful in the classes that I've taught and I, I really like this tool. And then any kind of sharp knife, uh, this is a frost knife, it's a carving knife, uh, any kind of a sharp knife for trimming the reed at the end of the process around the the top of the broom weaving uh, is something that you'll need. Another thing that works real good are the, are the safety knives that you can get at the hardware store. Those work great also. The last tool that is the key technology in Appalachian broom making is a broom maker's tying frame. And the broom maker's tying frame is, uh, I, I make these from uh, native hardwoods and they're just basically a, a two inch, two by two piece of turning stock that's anywhere from, depending on the size of the broom maker, for kids I make them about 12 inches long, for adults they're anywhere from 17 to 24 inches long. And uh, I put a taper in the, uh, in the middle of the, of the turning stock that's about an inch and a quarter, inch and a half uh, in diameter. And then to start the, the most important piece is to remember that there's a hole drilled, uh, a half inch hole drilled through the middle of one side of the taper that gives you a place to attach the tying twine. So the tying twine is used with the tying frame laying on the floor and we're going to do that here in a little bit.
The next step in Appalachian broom making is to pick out your corn and from our from my bundle of corn that I have tools out of the way here from the bundle of corn that we have and the supplier there's a couple of different ways to do this uh, to, to uh, acquire broom corn for tying the uh, most of the most of the heirloom seed companies will have broom corn seeds for sale and um, I grow my own broom corn and harvest it and I have to supplement that with the classes that I do and the number of brooms I make uh, it's really hard to make to grow enough broom corn uh, to have enough for the brooms if you do any quantity at all um, one package of a couple hundred seeds will grow just about enough broom corn for one or two brooms believe it or not and the uh, to plant enough broom corn and to process it uh, will certainly uh, to give give you a uh, an appreciation for how much work it actually is to harvest this and to provide it to market. And it's basically the reason that uh, no one in America grows it commercially is because it is it is a significant amount of work to uh, provide. Uh, uh, broom corn in any quantity that has uh, been uh, carefully processed that you can make brooms with. So I just uh, I get my broom corn from a company called R E K D that's C A D D Y. If you do a search online for for broom corn, uh, they're going to be the one that comes up, and they've got a couple of boxes. You can get a 10 pound box for uh, I think it's around forty dollars, and you can get a 50 pound box for around one hundred fifty dollars. And the uh, the ten pound box will make you make a handful of brooms. Figure uh, figure with waste and trimming uh, to to uh, that you can make uh, with a ten pound box. You could probably make a half a dozen to maybe a dozen brooms if you're conservative with it and careful. So the sources are uh, there's really just a couple of sources. Again, it's R E Katie, or you can grow your own broom corn from the, the heirloom seeds. Uh, but sorghum also works, and, and especially if you want to make brusum, uh, besoms, or if you want to make brooms that are uh, that are small, like a whisk. Uh, sorghum is an especially good source, and the neat thing about sorghum is it does come in uh, multiple colors. There's browns, and there's reds, and there's blacks, and uh, they 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 really are they really are pretty. So there's a lot of different types of broom corn. Uh, what what you think of as a traditional broom corn is a type of sorghum, and the uh, the, the the labor intensive piece of the process is in, is in getting the seeds off of the corn at the right time, uh, so that you uh, so that you don't tear the the fibers of the broom corn up when uh, when extracting the seeds, and that's where all the work is involved. So uh, two things have to happen uh, to to prepare for tying the broom. And one of those is to take a quantity of the broom corn, and I'm going to take, uh, I always tell my students that the best amount to take is just about a fistful. So just about what can fit in your hand with, between your thumb and forefinger closed from the bundle is about the right amount. Any more than that, and it's, it will be very, very difficult to actually tie the broom with the shaft of the broom in place. Now I'm going to make, I got a special order that I'm doing to make a kitchen besom and I'm using about half again as much corn as I would usually use for this process because the kitchen besom is a lot bigger than the uh, the little whisks and the, and the, and the hearth besoms that I like to tie. So. One of the things that's been real good to me is the hand fasting besoms that the uh, the folks in the alternative, uh, what used to be called alternative lifestyle communities used for instead of uh, weddings. So the hand fasting besoms are nice. Uh, they're, uh, they're a sweet thing. And the uh, hearth besoms uh, with, uh, with the lanyard left for a decorative charm so that somebody can clean up their fireplace is also a, uh, a pretty nice craft project. So this is, uh, this is quite a bit more broom corn than I usually use. It's a little bit more than a handful, but I'm making a kitchen broom, so I need, uh, 
I need to have enough corn left on the end so that uh, that the, this uh, person wants the original round broom and is going to actually use it in a uh, in their kitchen for sweeping. So after you've picked out your broom corn and have got enough for the project that you want to work, uh, the thing uh, there's a there's a thing that I really like to use in my classes. It's really handy and it's amazing to me that most of these get thrown away as durable as they are. But the extra large drink cups from any fast food restaurant uh, really make a perfect accompaniment to your tools for traditional broom tying. I guess a little crock or uh, something that's a little bit more traditional looking would look better. But uh, I like recycling things and uh, to, to actually use these cups instead of throwing them away uh, makes my heart feel good. So the next step is to dip the dip the broom corn in there, get it in the get it in the cup, and sink it down. And we're going to let that set. I'm going to come back after about 30 minutes, and we're going to let that set and absorb absorb the water, so that the broom corn better takes to being tied, and that it can be tied tighter. And at the end of the process, we'll have uh, we'll have a fiber that that when it's dry is amazingly durable in its tied state. The other step that we are going to do that actually needs to be done first and the and the reed needs to be kept longer in the water than the broom corn actually and the, the best uh, the best amount of time that I found is about an hour uh, sometimes even longer and I've got some I think I've got some 3 8 here that's just about perfect. It will be just about perfect for this broom. I'm going to tie it with, with red basket cane. So I've got basket reed that I've used dies on. And the, the unique feature of the Appalachian brooms, the oldest brooms, the old besoms, was that the tires decided to start using basket reed instead of the instead of the base of the broom corn. So another point uh, and, and a note of practice is that the pieces of the broom corn that I've chosen are traditionally what's called hurl, H-U-R-L, and the hurl is a piece that most of the broom makers that do the the the, uh, the shaker brooms will throw away because they don't like them little twisted ends and they want a very uh, flat and consistent broom all the way from the base to the, to the tip of the broom. And um, uh, most broom makers will keep the hurl now and will make, uh, will make whisks and, and besoms with that. Uh, but I get my, I get my hurl from a, from a broom maker also that basically pitches this part. Uh, the broom cart itself has a shaft on the end and the uh, uh, when they started using the uh, broom corn originally, the the shaft was was uh, was used as part of the weaving. And I just personally don't care for the looks of that. I think it's a little bit too chunky. And when I discovered that the Appalachian broom makers uh, used uh, basket reed, since I make baskets also, uh, that's a thing that I decided to adopt into uh, into my broom making practice. And everybody loves it. the The basket reed is uh, allows itself. It has a uh, it has a characteristic appearance that is uh, that is unique at festival, and it draws the eye because it's something different. So the the secret with the basket reed is to uh, to get it to where it will fold, so that it can be woven. Is to make sure that it's extra wet, and it just takes time. It takes about an hour. So I usually cut about about six inches, six or seven inches. Uh, we're going to have uh, about four to five inches of, uh, of, of woven binding uh, at the at the base of the broom or at the at the end of the handle. And uh, I always like to cut a little bit extra so that you can trim that and not run out. And sometimes the the weaving uh, has it takes a benefit from if you get one of them that's off just a little bit. Having the extra reed will uh, allow you a little bit of room for error. So we're going to cut about seven inches here, and I'm going to cut about 15 of these, and we're going to put them in the water. 
So as I as I cut these, I'm going to dip them in the water, and then the and then we'll need to keep turning them once they're in the water. Turn them over and over and over again so that they they all get wet to the same amount. And I'm going to cut about 15 of them. traditional broom, the broom makers always had 13 bindings and if you want to make a, a witch's besom, 13 bindings is one of the requirements. Whether it's 13 pieces of broom car or whether it's 13, uh, 13 pieces of basket reed around the around the broom handle. Uh, I usually find that I, I usually put between 11, anywhere from 11 to 17, um, it, a, a odd number of bindings will, uh, reads will, on the, in the binding, will make the process a lot easier. Although you can, if you end up with an even number, like I did in the last class that I taught, I think I had 21, I made a pretty thick um, hearth besom for someone. I think I had 21, um, they, they, it's, it was quarter inch half round binding. Uh, and what, what you can do is you can skip to as you weave around so you get around to the next row and if you've got an even number and you and you weave like basket weaving you'll end up with one sticking up and one bound but if you skip two rows each time you go around with an even number of reeds uh, the weaving will still turn out uh, and, and it's really uh, kind of looks almost like a it does look like a random pattern uh, so it's an acceptable thing to do, especially if you've got a complicated broom that you've put a lot of work into and you want to go ahead and get that broom bound without taking it back apart. Putting in putting in the uh, putting in a even number of reed uh, reed layers does work, weaving layers. I'm going to make a couple of besoms today, so I'm cutting some extras here. I've got uh, this is just standard basket reed that I've dyed with Cushing dyes, and I like the Cushing dyes because they're they're very uh, they're very durable and they're very fixable. They stay put, and uh, we'll do a when it warms up. We'll do a reed dyeing lesson here with uh, with some Cushing dyes to uh, to show our process to make a dye that's traditionally for a protein fiber work with a cellulose fiber and uh, basket reed of course is a cellulose fiber.